Portrait Artist of the Year, episode, uh, Season 9, Episode 1. We're starting a new season, which is really exciting. I feel like each year the program gets better, so we will see if that is true. Let's get started. And please consider leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe, because many people do, which is exciting for me. Now let's look at our participants. In order to be on the program, you have to submit a self-portrait. And I love seeing how people present themselves. And we always have a great variety. That's a really big, looks like a drawing to me. Oh, look at that one too. Yeah. I also have joined on Facebook a group that is currently showing their rejections for Landscape Painter of the Year. And all I can say about this process of being accepted is, there's no rhyme or reason to it. You watch, you see these rejected paintings and, and they're, they're as good as anything that's won the entire program. So I don't understand the judging at all, which we've talked about before, so I won't belabor that. Um, this is a woman who was on, I believe last season. Yeah, this is 2022, season nine, and she was on in uh, season two, uh, 2021. So I suspect they encouraged her to uh, come back. So um, that means that her chances are extremely high. Not that that, although that we've seen other people who have appeared on the program before and do spectacularly, but don't get through for whatever reason. Like I said, the judging is a mystery to me, but we're here for the art. We are here for the art. And that is always delightful and never disappoints. Wow, look at that. It's a little hard to see because it's small, but there's a lot of detail in there. Now, let's take a look at our first model. Our first model up is Elizabeth Day. She is an English novelist. I'm not familiar with her. Uh, there is a plain blue background behind her, and she chose a red dress, and that's, that's going to be an exciting color to work with. Now, four hours into the program, it's not really four hours, but four hours on task, the artists turn their easels around, and Elizabeth gets to see the paintings, as do we, and she's also going to select one to go home. Now, that's an honor, but has nothing to do with the final judging, and there will be one winner from this episode that goes on to the semifinals. So the first one is a drawing, certainly very accurate, and we have had someone who draws become the winner of the entire program. However, that's very rare. So, did I say drawer? That's <laughs> Please, in the, note, in the comments below, what is the correct word? Oh, you know, I am starting to have that, that, well, I'm not starting to have that issue. I've always had kind of a word finding problem and I think many artists do and that's why we express ourselves visually instead. It just works a lot better. Now you can see the size of the drawing there. It's beautifully done. I just don't think that that's going to carry the day when it comes to the final judging. Remember, the commission is going to go on a gallery wall, and um, I don't know if that's going to meet their criteria. criterion. I never know. Here's the next one up. I went on a deep dive on this artist because I wanted to see if it was a watercolor. Uh, it sure looks watercolor-ish to me. There are so seldom a watercolor painters on this program. So... But looking at the technique tells me that, that it probably is. It also is absolutely beautifully rendered and nicely done and looks really strong. Now let's come in a little bit closer so we can see some detail. There's a lot of really important drawing going on there. Now artists bring technology with them because the model is, is really far away, probably about 10 feet away. That's pretty far away. You're not going to see eyelashes from 10 feet away. So you're going to need some support. And also the, the model may not be sitting there the whole time. They may be having a phone conversation or get up and walk around. That's a beautiful job. And that I think would read across a gallery. Whereas the first one, which had no color, I'm not sure it would. Oh, here's, okay. This is the woman who is returning. So I strongly think she is, has favored, favored nation status today on this program. So I am familiar with her painting. She does a really beautiful job. And from what I can tell when it comes to her work, she, her thing is sort of this unfinished 
thing. So even when she has a lot of time, she doesn't necessarily finish every detail, which I'm not opposed to at all. And in this case, it's really a Solomon's choice. You know, you only have four hours. This is a fairly big format that she chose. So, you know, are you going to concentrate on the face? You're going to concentrate on the body? Uh, it's really impressive that she was able to accomplish uh, tackling both and wasn't able to get to the chair. And I know I talk about that I don't like things not anchored in, but in this case, uh, I, it, it just doesn't have that problem for me. So I say good job on that one. So let's see. Oh, we're going to go and look at it one more time. Yeah, wow. That is, that is really accurate skill in draftsmanship. Really nicely done. Hmm. Well, she's not a colorist, but but that doesn't matter. Yeah, her skills are really in drawing and drawing with paint, whereas the first artist that we saw in this particular segment is a re really good at drawing, but draws with pencil. All right, Elizabeth Day is gonna pick one to take home. I'm pretty sure which one she's gonna take home, and let's take a look and see which one she picks. Yeah, this one. Yep, I think that was the strongest as well, although, who knows? I'm never right. Hashtag Joe is always wrong. I, I never get either the what the judges are going to pick right or what the uh, what the models choose. Now, our next model up is Nick Grimshaw, and Nick is an English television presenter. Yes, let's look look at him. Yeah, um, you know these these people who are on television they tend to have really beautiful symmetrical young faces, and so that can make things um, surprisingly difficult. Here's the first one up. This is a little bit of a detail of it, and then we'll we'll pull back a little bit. I, I'm not so sure it has a resemblance to him. It has some of his features, but I don't know that it hangs together as a resemblance of him. It certainly has echoes of him. But um, now that doesn't, that's not a factor for the judges a lot of the time. What they're looking for is is good painting. And this is this is a very solid good painting. Really, really nicely done. And he completed the whole thing. You know, he you know dotted the I's and crossed the T's. So good job on that. Okay, now we get to see the size of it. Yeah, from far away, that's going to carry the day. Really nicely done. The only problem is it, it just doesn't really look like him. Hmm. And yet we, we will move on. So that is our first contestant in this particular segment. Let's look at the next one coming up. The next one coming up is this one. Oh, now this one, bless your heart, and I do this to my own art, so I feel like I can do it here. I just don't like the colors going on here. And, uh, you know, of course green would be reflected in the dog and reflected in the skin. That's really smart to do. It makes a lot of sense. But that, oh boy, I just want to tone that green down. It's so bright. You know, we seldom get a chance to talk about brightness and dullness on this program. You know, we talk about color. We talk about how light or dark a color, uh, um, you know, a color is. And we talk about saturation. But there, a brightness and dullness issue is going on here. Everything is very, very bright. It would have been really nice if that background could have been toned down a little bit adding a little bit of red, just tilting, tipping, just just tipping that green into a more neutral um, tone would have made a big difference here. And um, I don't know if that's age and experience or, you know, what I do know from talking with other artists is that everybody sees color differently. So what I see as being almost garish, someone else might see as being uh, extremely pale pleasant. Oh, wow. Okay. This one. Oh, this one I really like. I, again, I don't think any of them in this particular segment have a resemblance, uh, nailed his, his, what he looks like, but there's a resemblance here. Um, lots of lost and found edges, which I always adore. I love when you can see the paint strokes and those are big paint strokes. She's not working from her elbow down. She's got her whole arm in the, in the project. Really, really nicely done very warm in the skin and the black could have made everything flat and dull but she was able there she's put in those yellows that give those forms yeah see the difference in how kind of um 
I don't know how to say it, but stark the last one was with the green as compared to this one. This one emerges from the canvas and the one before looks like it was uh, pasted on top. This is what I love about painting, when something looks like it's being born, yeah, from, from, uh, from, from the canvas up. Oh, look at those edges. Wow, that's really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. You know, really, really feathery, feathery brush strokes. Whoa, that, that's, that's time on task. This person spent a lot of time on task. Very different from, from drawing, but needs to have good drawing to anchor it in. All right, Nick Grimshaw is going to pick one to take home. I think he's going to pick the last one we just saw, but um, you already know I'm always wrong, so let's see what happens. <laughs> ah, yeah, see, I was wrong. He likes this one. All right, so be it. That is what we love about art. It's like horse racing. Everybody has an opinion, and everybody can be right. Everybody can be a winner. Now, our na last model in this episode is um, Kahaja Ma Mela. I looked that up phonetically, so somehow I think I pronounced it correctly, but uh, good heavens, this that's tough for me. Oh, and what does she... F oh, she's a jah jihab wearing jockey. Wow. So she's a female jockey from the UK, and she she wear she's come in her gear. I love that they put those jockey like you know diamonds behind her. I don't know the significance of why the shirt was next to her. Like I often say, I watch the program with the sound off. I don't want to be influenced by the judges. I just want to look at the art. Here is our first artist up. Once again, we don't have a resemblance, but uh, <laughs> oh, I see. They took the butterflies that were on the shirt and put them next to her. So. So there's significance for her and meaning and, and symbolism. And that's, that's really important. That's what you want in, a, in any kind of portrait, you know, a representation that's very individual to you, which is often why people will pose with something really important to them, like their, their dog or, or, or some, or, you know, even down to what they wear in terms of, you know, um, wardrobe and, and jewelry. It's really significant. So we pulled away a little bit. I like that uh, the diamonds were included. I think that's an important design element. This is not, um, this person also is not a colorist. There's a lot of outlining going on here and that's, that's fine. Oh, I remember her self-portrait. Yeah, that she's got a definite signature style, which I think I would recognize if I was to see it again. The only issue here is, um, once again, there's, hasn't nailed the, the likeness and the colors are um they're they're fine I, it's just one of those things that you know when you see a painting and you fall in love with it well, I, I'm, I'm not in love with that one okay here's the next one up wow the reason i say wow is there's so much detail in this because we we're talking earlier about you know you have to sort of sacrifice what you're going to do in terms of design in four hours you're either going to do the face or the body and this person uh, did the face uh the body the shirt that was on the mannequin next to her and the diamonds behind her and the stage and the chair. He did the whole thing. Oh, I think he was the fellow who was holding that smaller self-portrait of him at the beginning that had a lot of details. So he is speedy. He's very speedy. And, and I think it's a beautiful painting. And look at how relaxed the body is from far away. If that's what he can do in four hours, he could he can win this this program and, and do the final commission. Wow, look at that. That is, that's just really, really excellent. You know, it could have been really, really flat with all that black, but he's got a roundness to the forms. And I don't know how he accomplished that with a, obviously a really small brush. Uh, I, I could never do that. I need a big brush. Oh, now you see this kind of painting that I love. I love this kind of painting. Yeah, I love this kind of painting because of the design elements. You know, big, broad brush strokes. This is a colorist. This is someone who's looking at color, determining how bright it is, how dull it is, looking at the value of it. She And, and it is making color value swap outs. Not that other people didn't, but in this case, the color value swap outs really enhance and make you go, wow, look at that. You know, the color has a real impact. That cerulean blue really shines. And, and pops, and, and that's really because of the complementary color behind. You know, if you have, 
you have blue anywhere near orange, you're going to get more power than you would get from it when it comes out of the tube, simply because it's in such a contrast to, you know, the, color, the, the surrounding colors. So uh, hats off. That was really, really smart. It reads really well from far away. That's nicely done. And that's about, you know, you, I, I don't see what the judges are looking for that isn't more than that. Now, let's see which one she picks to take home. And like I said, that will be an honor. And then we will get to the final judging. Let's see. She picks this one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, I would have, I probably would have picked this one too, although I loved the last one. Well, that's the thing. When I buy art, I have to fall in love with it. You have to love it. You're going to see it every day. All right, the judging begins. Now, the judging begins. It's been an incredibly long day. You haven't slept in your own bed. You had to get to London. You, you spent four hours on task, but you've been interviewed. There have been interruptions. There are hot television lights. This was filmed in 2022, so I think there was an audience. I'm not sure. This might have still been a time of, of COVID. So... This must be an incredibly long day. Only three of these people will go on. Here's the first one up. We've already talked about this one, that I find it just, I really, really like this painting. That's what makes it hard. So I really, really like this painting, but it does have exaggerated forms, and that exaggeration makes the face not look like our sitter. Here's the second one. And don't be distracted by the red diamonds behind. That that was the background on the set. Um, so if you can look at the, the painting just with the green diamonds, he just, he's, he's the complete package, beautifully done. And the last one, well, not surprised because I think she was invited back and I think they want to see more of her. So that doesn't surprise me. Now we will go on to the final judging for this episode. Now the final judging for this episode is kind of, for me, the... Um, icing on the cake. Because what we get to do is we get to see the self-portraits where they had lots of time to work on something next to what they were able to do in four hours. Yeah, I thought so. I thought that was the fellow at the beginning who was holding that self-portrait that was just was a little bit small uh, for me to see everything, but lots of detail. So he must do very close work. He must be very, um, very used to working with a very, very small brush and mapping things out. So, wow, that makes sense. I, um, I'm not as familiar with that style of painting. Let's look at the next one. Next one up. Wow, I really love the self-portrait. That would have been a COVID mask, I'm sure, on his chin. Um, but the painting that he did today, I think he meant to exaggerate those features. And, you know, the hand in front. See how big the hand is? There's, there's, so I think he's doing an exaggeration. I just not absolutely convinced that, that he pulled it off. And of course, we have the last one, which is the woman who I believe was recruited. Yeah, there's her self-portrait, and there's what she did today. So you can see that's her thing, to do drawing, and then you add paint to it, but you, and then you leave a lot of um, unfinished space. Very accurate, very beautifully done, and, um, and you know, that's a signature style. I suspect we're going to see more of her. I think they're going to pick her. I know I'm always wrong, but I think she was invited back, and I think she was invited back for a reason. So let's see. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Who is the winner? The winner is... Oh, that's what I thought. And that's fine. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint sweat, mask for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.